Hey everyone and welcome to this week's Racing Mentor podcast. I'm Toby Trice and I'm here with Jess Shanahan. Jess, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Thanks, Toby. How are things going with you? Yeah, really good. Busy, super busy as always. Um, I think every week I'm on here, <laughs> I've always seen about how busy I am, but busy's good. Making really good progress with uh, sponsorships. I'm actually in negotiations now with a new sponsor. Um, hopefully that all comes off and that's looking all pretty good at the moment. So that's good. Very um, exciting. Yeah, definitely. How's everything your way? Yeah, like also busy, but only because I'm I'm getting set up to um, employ someone, which wow. is a big deal uh, for me and my business. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to do an official reveal yet, but um, it's someone that a lot of you will have met at events. So um, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll be doing like a you know a big like you know welcome to the team kind of video or something once she's joined the business. But yeah, it's just been a, a case of like setting up project management systems and doing like a little hustle for clients for the jet social like content side of my business and as a result I've got a ton of new clients uh before I've even brought someone on board so I'm just trying to juggle them at the moment and get everyone on boarded but yeah it's it's exciting times and despite uh I guess a recession that we're in now so it feels extra scary but I'm also extra proud of like the work that I've put in yeah definitely I mean for you what recession right yeah I know <laughs> um, like we've been catching up quite a lot lately about what you're up to and um yeah wow Jess it's so impressive and it kind of <laughs> it kind of just amazes me what you're achieving you know short space of time you've got an idea and you go to town with it and then yeah the results you bring in is amazing but um yeah I'm super excited to see this reveal obviously I know who that is yeah um, <laughs> I think everyone has probably guessed by now yeah maybe a little bit obvious but yeah. I think it's a good choice and um yeah I'm super excited for you and so proud that that you're making that step and thank you yeah, good luck with the future and thanks yeah <laughs> um right should we jump in with some fun facts yeah let's go um you shoot first yes okay so toby once boiled the brakes of a fiat 500 during an italian road trip through the mountains yeah that was interesting um <laughs> kate was petrified bless her <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jess's fun fact is that she once drove two cats to Sweden because their owner couldn't afford to fly them out. I mean, that's pretty heroic, Jess. I mean, fair play. That's a good friend right there. I'm, I'm definitely like a cat hero. <laughs> <laughs> Mega. Well, we all love animals here. Absolutely. I that love... was a great road trip. Like, I know we're, we're not, we're supposed to like just say the facts and move on, but that was one of my, my favorite road trips. 19 hours just driving these two poor kitties across Europe. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like we got some strange looks on the ferry um, yeah. between Germany and Denmark because <laughs> they weren't allowed to stay in the car; they had to come out. <laughs> that's so random. Did you have on leads? <laughs> no, they were just in boxes. Okay. But the 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 word "kitty" is universal. Like everyone was just going "kitty." I was like, "Yes, we have cats." <laughs> Sounds that's, hilarious. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, well, this week's podcast um, is absolutely your bag, Jess. Um, this week, guys, we're talking about side hustles and ways to generate income on the side of your motorsport business just to help support you and just to help kind of prop up your financial position and, and that helps free up time and, and all the good stuff for, for racing. Jess, this is your absolute bag. You're like the queen of side hustles. Um <laughs> And your experiences, which we'll go into, are vast and varied, and you've had lots of success and unsuccessful stories. So it's going to be quite fun to share these today. But um, just for the viewers that are listening and not sure what a side hustle is, can you describe what is a side hustle? Yeah, so a a side hustle is typically like something you do at the side to make money. So for some people, it might be painting and selling that on Etsy. For other people, it might be buying and selling cars. That there's lots of options here but yeah typically it's defined as I guess there's two ways it's something that just makes you a little bit of money on the side or for a lot of people it's something that you start um, as a business on the side with the view to grow it into something larger so it's often done alongside a full-time job and actually I started my business as a side hustle but way back when I was working for a marketing agency I was doing SEO writing work as a freelancer and that's kind of where my business came from so um a side hustle can always kind of like develop into something bigger but I think it's it's a really good way to supplement your income or even to make sponsorship levels of of money to, for, for racing yeah and I mean I started my racing journey um certainly the business side as a side hustle um it's now almost a full-time thing that I'm doing um and I'm actually 
looking to explore what side hustles I can do alongside that to complement my racing. Um, so it just it's quite interesting actually because how a side hustle can be from just a side hustle, just something small that's just there to help out, just just build a bit of finances and stuff, can end up being a full time thing. <laughs> Not all go that way, and some stay as side hustles, but um, it's just good and fun to explore what your options are because. I think that exploration is definitely what allows you to kind of see what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy and what can be fruitful for you and what can't. And it's, I think that exploration is really good and you've definitely done lots of different things in the past. So um, have you got any kind of ideas of what you've done in the past that perhaps may not have worked so much or other oh. things that are still working for you? Tons. Oh, I've, I've had so many failures. So let's start there. So um, even a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't, fancying a day of work so I decided to set up a drop shipping store and realized it's not as easy as all the youtubers make make it out to be um so for anyone that doesn't know drop shipping is where you set up like an e-commerce store um to sell products but you don't actually hold any stock so when you get a sale you then order it wholesale to go straight to the the person that bought it meaning that you're not having to worry about warehousing or like where you're going to store all this stuff but you can still make money selling products. And people have been doing it for years on like Amazon and eBay. Um, but with sites like Shopify, um, which links into a drop shipping thing called a Burlo, the tech is there to do it and make it your own brand as well, which means you can kind of elevate it, make it look a bit more slick than maybe what some other people are doing. Uh, so you can put a higher mark upon these products, but it takes a lot of work to build a brand as you guys know. Um, so that there's the whole building the brand, getting your head around Facebook ads, doing social media, all of that kind of stuff you have to put into doing a drop shipping store. And there are some great YouTube videos online on like how to like the products that um, you might choose, but also like how to set up a store in 24 hours and start making sales. And that's kind of the process I went through and made zero sales. So I think I'm just going to close both stores that I did. I can see that it would work. I just don't have the time at the moment to, to put into it. So that's, that's kind of like one thing that hasn't worked for me. Um, what else have I done? Uh, I think that, that was, that's the big recent failure. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff where I've been like, right, I'm going to start, you know, getting, I guess like being a, a road trip journalist was kind of a side hustle while I was running my agency. That kind of, evolved so I wouldn't say it was a, uh, an unsuccessful side hustle because it evolved into future of mobility journalist after I did an electric road trip um so it kind of you kind of have to follow the flow sometimes because you'll see where the demand is for the thing that you can offer everything else has kind of been mildly successful I would say yeah I did uh, when I was running my fashion blog I did set up a like a health consulting service that but I didn't really know what I was doing back then. This is like 2010. And it was like, I, I want, I, I did a nutrition qualification and I wanted to give people like nutrition and health advice off the back of like this profile that I'd built as like a health and fashion blogger. Right. Um, but again, I didn't really know what I was doing and just kind of fell by the wayside for stuff that had like more success more quickly. Yeah. So and the, the stuff that has worked, racing mental, <laughs> side off as a side hustle. Hell yeah. How can I help these racing drivers that I love so much do this thing that they don't know how to do? I'll do that alongside running an agency. And I wrote a book that overtook my life. Um, <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> but I mean, I, I would say it's like the perfect side hustle because it now kind of runs itself. There's a lot of, you know, me being present and me doing marketing. Yeah. But as, as far as selling products goes it pretty much runs itself and even if I don't do anything for a month it still makes that nice residual income which I think is what a lot of people kind of want from a side hustle um yeah definitely and I think which, the fact that you've just used like your interests um exactly because you've you've kind of done this exploration over quite a long time you know 2010s 10 years ago um I'm sure there's other ideas that you've sort of popped up in and out from that time but um the fact that racing mental was a side hustle at the very early days but it was something that your passion was about to help solve a problem that exploration has led you to have you know a full-time business i mean race and mentors massive now and the yeah. community is huge and yeah look where it's got to but if you didn't have that exploration back then and you thought about this idea and you followed your heart and your interests 
then I wouldn't be sat here, Jess. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think with with like side hustles, there there is a lot of trial and error. But I think when I started, there was a lot less information out there on it. Hmm. So I was just kind of like, I know I need to productize something. So I, I, you know, I obviously tried productizing these like health plans and I tried productizing uh, website building services when my agency was a full service agency um, and it, it never quite worked. But now there's so much information out there, just like this podcast, that will talk about things like selling digital products is the way forward because they really are hands off and people want them. Um, you know, you can get information on like how to price them, how to market them, you know, how to find a niche, all of that kind of stuff. So it kind of makes it a bit easier now, but there is mm. still like an element of trial and error of like what you enjoy doing and how much time you want to spend on it for the return involved. Yeah, for sure. And and that's something that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to now find an explorer, a sort of side gig to help complement my, my racing, um, and my finances. And so I'm very much at the, the birth of this as, alongside my racing journey. Mm. And I think it's exciting and interesting. You know, there's lots of opportunity out there. And I think what is the the sort of corporate world of um, just a job, um, side hustles actually can be quite fun. And the fact that you're more free to work is kind of what I like, especially yeah. while I'm a racing driver. I kind of want a bit more freedom rather than bound to a nine to five. And yeah, it's certainly worth exploring because like you you don't know what opportunities you're going to create for yourself and where it's going to go. So super exciting, but let's just talk about um, how do you go about creating a side hustle? Cause that's, you know, that's quite a big mm. thing, right? Is um, how do you do it? Yeah. So I, I actually coach people on this. So I coach racing drivers and just f- freelancers or people in jobs who like even outside of motorsport who want to do this, because I think that having multiple income streams is so, so important because if one disappears, you've still got a backup or two or mm-hmm. three or four. So um, I can run you through this, Toby, if you want. You can answer if you feel comfortable. But I I start off by asking people like what their main interests are. So like the things that really kind of get you excited. I think everyone listening to this podcast will be like motorsport, obviously. Yeah, racing. (laughs) Um, So yeah, start by asking people their interests. And even if it's like really obscure, like maybe once you went, I don't know, potholing. I don't know where that came from, but yeah, maybe once you went caving or potholing and and you realize how much you love it, you know, is there a way that you can explore that? Um, So it doesn't have to be the thing that you do every day. Um, Maybe you used to love painting or baking or something like that, but don't get a chance to now. Well, there's still things that could kind of, you know, be part of this. So So don't just think about the thing that is really obvious to all of us. Like I would obviously say motorsport and cars as well. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't have to be that. Um, do you kind of have any ideas on that, Toby? Do you have like interests that you've already been thinking about that could kind of feed into your side hustle? Yeah, I mean, I guess, um, you yeah, know, going back to before racing, I was a photographer and I love photography. Um, I love road trips, as you know. Um, anything to do with kind of imagery and video and all that kind of stuff is what mm. I absolutely adore. And I suppose... I suppose in some respects you can call my YouTube channel a new side hustle because if yeah. I can get to a point where I monetize it, which is my goal, um, then that's going to support my racing and my finances in in a really clear way. And it's something that I really enjoy because I can link the the love of motorsport and I really love photography and videography. So mm. I really enjoy the video edit inside and I've learned all these skills to to do it. So I suppose you can call my YouTube channel a, a current yeah. side hustle. Absolutely. Yeah. And after interests, I then ask people what they're good at. Yeah. So these are the things that you might be better at than the average person, but you don't have to be the expert necessarily if you are great. So for some people that might be, uh, oh, Toby, tell me what you're good at. You're good at communication, talking to people. Yeah. Um, I, as I know on this podcast, I've said before, I'm terrible at writing. So I, I originally looked at, um, affiliate marketing through blogs. Um, mm. and I'm, I'm teaching myself how to write better so I can be more efficient and, mm-hmm. and better at writing. But I, I'm, yeah, I'm good at just chatting to people. That's, that's my, that's the yeah. bit I love. I love meeting people and chatting to people. And with regards to like videography and photography, I feel like I'm really good at that. But because I've spent the last 12 years doing photography, I suppose yeah. maybe longer. Um, so I've got good over time and, and that's a, a sort of trade that I, that I love and adore. So, I feel like I'm good at that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, 
but okay. yes yeah, it's, it's good to it's obviously good to look at you know those sort of things yeah and like and then the hard question comes in what do you think people will pay for and you can drill this down into f- like four areas so like um something that has high demand and a high price that's obviously like the golden area mm. um high demand and low price low demand low price don't go there low demand high price so you can start combining your interests and your expertise and like plotting them almost on this little like you know cross-shaped graph with like these four different areas and yeah. you can put where each goes and you obviously want to go for the one that um is in is as close to high demand like high um price yeah or high value so for you toby like just with your interests and expertise you might you know you might write down a list of things that looks like you know doing photography training um in person doing photography training online creating little photo downloadable guides like where do people pay for those maybe that's because i'm a photographer um but literally like printable guides or even downloadable pdfs that have all the settings that you need to do a certain kind of photography Mm -hmm. which might actually work quite well for you considering that your your expertise is in film photography like if people want to get into that that's actually harder to get into than digital photography which kind of almost does it for you yeah and yeah analog photography is super super niche um yeah it's a proper trade like um for those that are, you've not seen my photography I, I shoot primarily on an old 1980s Hasselblad um the camera that went to space um it uses old film that I have to keep in the fridge and that bugs my partner because it's usually full of uh, <laughs> full of rolls of film <laughs> um but yeah it's, it's super niche you know it's a proper process I have to you know there's a lab that I use and it's really you know, it's not just much as like click, 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 and you download mm. onto your computer and you get the images. Um, I have to wait two weeks to get the pictures back, and um, yeah, it's a cool process. But yeah, that's something that's um, that's worth looking at for me for sure. Yeah. So, and and just using your examples on that kind of scale, so like um, analog photography training online uh, might be in the low demand but high value. Yeah. So you could get more per one, even though there'd be fewer of them. Whereas something like just training people in digital photography or selling those sheets would be high demand, but low value. Mm. So you might sell more of them, but a lower price. So that that's kind of how I go through think like side hustles with people. And, you know, you can do this with every single one of your interests, every single one of your expertise. So I feel like I'm not going to get any training work now to teach people to do this. I've just basically done it on here. On here. <laughs> um, so so that, that's kind of how I, I train people to do it. And I did this when, um, so I'm in the process of setting up another business because I'm side hustle queen. Oh, can that be my new nickname? Um, I'm going to add that to my Instagram bio. We'll call you, we'll call you that. I'm happy queen. with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... Uh, I guess it was the end of last year I wanted to do something that serves freelancers and again it comes from a place of I want to help people I had tons of success as a freelancer I kind of want to teach this so I was I was looking at okay I want to teach this but how can I do in a way that's going to be uh, the most beneficial to students I guess but is also going to make me the most money with the least effort Mm. Um, because if I do it that way then there's going to be more money to plow back into the business and I'm actually going to be able to spend more time on it whereas if I went for something really time consuming I probably wouldn't get anywhere and I came up with this idea for Vix Collective uh, which was another reason that I'm bringing um, a member of staff on board because she's kind of going to kind of take charge of this but it's going to follow the same kind of um, business model as Racing Mentor but it's going to be in a, a higher demand area just for freelancers mostly women who are um just looking to get a bit more kind of financial freedom um but i went through this process i'm like well what am i good at i'm good at teaching i'm good at hustling i'm good at creating you know extra income streams all of that kind of thing and um i thought it was you know this all kind of came together in a way that made sense to me just from my interests and from my expertise so um, I do this myself all the time. I didn't do it with the drop shipping thing though, so, which is probably why it fails. Yeah, and it just shows the importance of um, what you're good at and what your interests are. Um, because, yeah. you know, when it comes to a side hustle, I think there's lots of um, YouTubers and other people out there that are trying to influence you to do side hustles because I think they're a good thing to do, but they make it sound easy. Mm. Um, 
but everything you do does require some level of work at the start to get it to a point where it becomes almost like a passive type income yeah um but following something that you enjoy and love whilst also using the skill sets that that you've got that are good will only mean that you'll just make a success of it i think if you follow something just because it's gonna make you money it might it's probably not going to work because you just haven't got that kind of love for it mm. um, because let's not forget when you're doing a side hustle you're usually doing it on the side of your main employment um or you're already quite busy with with work and maybe sponsorship and racing all that kind of stuff um so this is actually quite a lot more to ask initially because you've got to then explore these ideas and, and follow it through um you've got to love it to to kind of warrant the time that you're going to put into it at the start to, yeah. to reap the, rene- the benefits later on so um, yes, probably while the dropshipping thing didn't work so well, yes, maybe because yeah. it wasn't just, it wasn't your bag, right? Yeah. And I did it. I did. I tried two avenues. I tried beauty products because beauty was like my thing many years ago. And then I tried like a, a smartwatch for hiking and it wasn't actually made for hiking, but I gave it this spin to give it its own new thing. But I thought, oh, I just can't be bothered to build a new brand. Like I've got brands that I'm building. I need to not get excited about doing that. And I think that comes from, I love building brands. Um, so actually maybe there's a, a side hustle in just building, I mean, it's not a side hustle. It's my actual job. My actual job is building brands for people in, you know, the more social, uh, world of things. Um, but I think I just, I just wanted to kind of take that and do something for myself when actually, you know, I, I've got a job that builds brands and ticks those boxes for me. So I didn't really need to do it somewhere else. Yeah. So let's talk about the types of side hustles there are, cause I think this can really spark ideas in people especially if they're now already starting to think about interests and expertises yeah so um as you guys know i'm a big fan of selling digital products just because they take so much work up front um and i'm not gonna tell you that it's zero work afterwards either but if you put in the work up front you will reap the benefits later on for less effort Mm -hmm. whereas if you're selling physical products the effort is spread out so I guess it depends on how you like to work where I'm definitely the kind of person that would just want to give it my all for a week, maybe two weeks, maybe six months, give it my all and then kind of sit back and then just do like low level marketing or something just to keep things ticking over. Whereas I know other people would rather do a bit every evening. So um, in the first case, in the case that works for me, it's digital products is great because I can I can spend a lot of time, I can work long hours to create a course or to write a book or to write an ebook or maybe to put together a load of downloadables. And you, you'll see this in the Racing Mentor business model. There's obviously a lot of courses, books and downloadables. I'd rather spend that time making the best product I can that's going to help people and then I test it. Um, we get results from it. And then that's when I put it up for sale. So it is actually a lot of work. It's not just I go, you know what, I'm going to do some more templates and they're up for the next day. It's a, it's a really long process. Yeah. But it means that once they're kind of up, the, the marketing is quite natural. It's just, you know, the usual social media, podcasts, videos, going on TV, all of that kind of stuff to, you know, hang out at racetracks, meeting people, the stuff that I love. And at the core of that, like those digital products serve your purpose of helping people. Exactly. Um, you've put all the effort in the front because you've got, right, okay, here's a problem. This is how I'm going to solve it with this product. Mm-hmm. And then once you've made it, um, you've just got to market, like I say, you've just got to market it to show people how that does solve a problem. And hey, Brest, are you? Yeah, exactly. Making... And there's um, a really great website called Gumroad. Right. And it's a, a place where people sell digital products. Um, but it's like, it's also its own marketplace. So you don't necessarily need to spend a lot of money setting up a whole brand. If you can create just one helpful thing, people will buy on there. And again, you might have to do a little bit of marketing, maybe write some, you know, guest posts on blogs and stuff like that. But um, if you just want to kind of test the water, create something that, you know, maybe you have a, I don't know, a, a worksheet that you look at for uh, something that you do in your job that you know could be improved i don't know um what that might be that might spark an idea for someone but maybe you have something that you refer back to that you wrote for yourself maybe it's like a blog post outline maybe it's something to do with calculating something in your job if you could better that or make it something saleable that will help people that's not really already out there or that you're putting a new spin on it just you know spend a few hours just kind of making it good to go stick it up on Gumroad for like $5, $10 and see what happens. 
because you can kind of test the water in that way. Um, and then if it blows up, then you know maybe it's time to create a whole brand serving the, the kind of audience that would buy that thing. Good shout. Mm. <laughs> That's a really good shout. Um, I've never heard of that. So, yeah. yeah, I keep thinking about doing it like because this Vix Collective like freelancer site isn't quite up and running yet. I thought, well, I've got like a money mindset course. I've got a couple of downloadables, like a content calendar, all that kind of stuff. And I was thinking, do I just shove those on Gumroad just to see what sticks, what works? Mm. So when the website does come, I then know not to waste time with uh, products that aren't effective or aren't as helpful as I think they are. So, and that's obviously kind of different to selling physical products. So um, let's say you buy and sell cars or maybe you create art, um, or Toby, in your case, maybe photography. Yeah, That's an ongoing product creation process. So you can still do the work getting set up to have a shop or whatever it is. But there is like a, you know, every evening you'll need to do something. So whether it's going out and looking at a car to buy and sell, whether it's, you know, putting that car onto Facebook Marketplace or Gumtree or, you know, your own e-commerce website, however it might work for you there is this more kind of ongoing thing and that actually works better for some people because they don't like that. I need to slog for six months before I get anything. You can buy a cheap 300 quid car and sell it for 400 quid. You've made a hundred quid profit. Um, it might be that easy. I don't know. I've never sold a car. If it is, why am I not <laughs> doing that? <laughs> Next <laughs> you're going to see me ab- advertising a car for sale. Just try it out. Um, Jess's dealership. <laughs> I did think about it once upon a time, but I don't have the, like the mechanical knowledge. And I think when you're buying and selling cars, you need to be able to go, "Mm, this is a bit creaky or this is doing that. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sell it on. Or you can go, yeah, mate, I'll take that off your hands for 50 quid. It's clearly broken. You then go fix it and sell it for a thousand. So I think, you know, when you're looking at your interests and expertise, if your interests are cars and your expertise are, you know, the mechanical, you know, workings of cars, um, then obviously buying and selling cars kind of makes sense. Absolutely. So yeah, with with any physical product, there's more of an ongoing thing of like, even if you're you're creating art, you have to sit down and create the arts and then get on like Etsy or Shopify or wherever you might sell it. But once you've kind of created a piece, you then have a digital, like a digital print that you can sell. There is obviously still the process of printing that out, but you do kind of like limit how much um, work there is involved after you've done like the initial art. So that could be, um, for anyone who's creative, that could be an option teaching if there's something that you know how to do way better than anyone else teach it might be guitar it might be basic um mechanics of a car um i know a lot of a lot of racing drivers obviously they're working on their cars you know you could even teach racing drivers how to do the basics of like looking after a car they've bought or like converting a road car to a race car stuff like that um obviously i realized that i was great at sponsorship and no one else was so i thought i'd teach that and the same with like the freelance side of things, like uh, teaching journalism, teaching side hustles, all that kind of stuff. I'm good at these things. So I like to teach them and help people kind of, you know, so I can pass on that knowledge. Yeah. And that's a unique skill set on its own, isn't it? Um, teaching is an amazing tool. If you've got it in your bag, then yeah, use it. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I, that it's not like it's just as easy necessarily as like setting up your camera and talking into it. Like I did a life coaching uh, and mentoring course. I've watched a lot of other people. I've done tons of research and I'm, I'm going to go on and do a, a more official teaching qualification at some point as well, just yeah. because the, the, you know, this is what I love doing and I'm, I'm always learning. So uh, don't, don't think that you, you, well, some people can, but don't think you can necessarily just set up and start teaching something and be successful. Again, there's work that goes into it. Um, you could like side hustles could also be a more traditional business as well. So it could be, you could start a software startup from, you know, your home office and just like slowly plug away at coding something that will change the world. You don't necessarily have to quit your job to go and, or, or even quit your racing to go and start a business. You can start a business in the smallest way and, and see it grow. Yeah. Um, so if you have that small idea and, you know, it can be creating a product, it can be teaching. These are all business ideas. But, you know, if you think, oh, I want to create an app that does this thing that I realize would help people. Or if you want to create, you know, a physical product, maybe it's like, you know, a car part or some technology that will help with the future of mobility 
this shows where my headspace is at right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can't stop thinking about that. That you know, you can you can start a business. Um, so d don't think that a business necessarily has to be like a big thing that you uproot your life for. It can start, you know, in the evenings when you're on your laptop watching TV. Yeah, and it's not a case of like chucking loads of money at it either. You know, you just no. just some time, some thought, and and just kind of just being strategic in the way that you're trying to do it can really help elevate these ideas and, and make them a real thing yeah absolutely i feel like this is going to be a really long long episode because i'm still not yeah. done talking about ideas but I'll, I'll try and i'll try and kind of run through these really quickly so um blogging back in 2009 to probably about 2012 blogging made me a ton of money that was really the heyday of affiliate marketing and sponsored posts before kind of a lot of the rules changed and I know you mentioned this, Toby, but like um, using affiliate marketing within your blog posts, even the ones that you do for your racing, um, or if you have another interest, maybe start another blog. Basically, if you have lots of people who trust you and come to your website, you can recommend products. And when they buy products, you get a small cut of that sale. It's really easy to do through Amazon, but there's tons of websites out there that will um, have affiliate uh, campaigns set up with your favorite brands as well. Um, so that might be something exploring if you do have a blog, especially one that's well read. Um, drop shipping, we've mentioned. I don't really have anything more to add to that other than it's a lot of work, but the payoff can be massive. And I'd recommend going on YouTube and looking at some of the tutorials there. They do make it look easy. It's not easy, but it is something kind of worth looking at. And another thing to kind of mention with drop shipping is you can find companies that will like white label products for you so they'll stick your stickers on it to make it look like yours now another failed business idea i wanted to do this with tea uh and i wanted to create a brand called tea total tea and i which i've copyright by the way everyone i still might use that uh right. i wanted to white label tea products so they'd still be drop shipped they'd still be sent from someone else but they'd have my brand on it and the whole concept behind it was, yes, we sell tea, but it's for people who don't drink. Because like, whenever I'm not out and I'm not drinking, I want a cup of tea. And everyone's like, that's really weird. It's like 11 p.m. and we're in a club. I'm like, yeah, well, I really want a cup of tea. So the idea was to create tea cocktails um, and iced teas and stuff like that. But um, it was really hard in the UK to find a supplier who would white label. They were all in China. And I didn't want that kind of shipping time for people that bought from us like 30 yeah. days shipping to get some tea is just not acceptable so i kind of had to put that off to one side so that that is another option if you're drop shipping is that you can white label and white labeling actually works for anything so there are a lot of um companies out there that will use your brand but they'll provide the service so, for example, I run a content agency, but back when it was a full service agency, we didn't do SEO, search engine optimization, but we white labeled it to another company. So they basically stuck the jet social branding on everything. They use our email addresses, but they just did the SEO. So it can make you appear a lot bigger than you are. So if you're already doing something, you know, maybe you're buying and selling cars and you want to add servicing in there, white label someone else's servicing. Um, put it under your brand, sell it all through the, the, you know, however it is that you sell your cars and kind of go from there. And obviously you pay that person, but you add a small markup on top of it to make some profit. Sounds pretty cool to be fair. I've never actually <laughs> thought about that. That's, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. A lot of people do it. Like they just say, yep, I'm now a marketing agency. Never do any work. I'm sure it happens in other industries. Never do any work, but white label ev and everything. And I actually think that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah yeah it's very pro it can be very profitable i suppose because yeah. um yeah kind of work eff effort versus reward is quite um yeah it's quite so if, you, then. if you're good at the sales side of things and you can be your own business development team you can then just go right i've got someone um who you know they need branding and some copywriting and this and then you just outsource it to freelancers or to small small agencies who are happy to white label hmm pretty pretty exciting right but yeah. all of these all of these sort of ideas and and these sort of journeys that you can put yourself on to to you know add income to to what already you've got um to support your racing and and, and onwards but all of this stuff's just really good just to develop really good business acumen 
as we spoke before, it's a really important tool to have or a skill set to have um, in order to succeed as a racing driver because A, you need to be really good at racing on track, but you also need to build the business around motorsport um, to, to gain sponsorship and, and return on sponsors investments. Um, but having all these sort of skills behind you and side hustles can help you learn these skills if you're struggling in that field, that only then complements your racing tenfold, right Jess? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the reason that I'm so good at sponsorship is because when I started, started, you know, like really focusing on doing it for, for 10, eight racing, I had already been a business for a number of years. So I knew what it was like to pitch and to market and to set up a brand and to, to kind of get yourself out there. I'd worked in PR, so I knew how to go and get press coverage and, you know, you can actually all of those skills are stuff that you would use to secure sponsorship, but also to promote um, a business as well. Yeah. So if you can't really nail down what your product is as a racing driver, maybe you should look again to your interests and your expertise and focus your energies on creating a side hustle that could bring in the same amount of money, but it's more lucrative because you understand it more. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, just leave the racing mentor family and never talk about sponsorship again. <laughs> um, but it, I, I do think that sponsorship isn't the only way to get money to go do what you love doing. I think it's it's important to to have this conversation around, you know what, you, you can make money by, you know, setting up things um, that purposely make you money without like kind of the, um, the sales, et cetera, of sponsorship, if that's not what you're good at. Yeah, and that's it. And that's what this is all about, really, Jess, isn't it? This whole episode is about kind of exploring, um, yeah, what you're good at, what your interests are, and how you can monetize to go racing. Because that's mm. why we're all here. We want to go racing. <laughs> so yeah. super important to, to look through that. And I think that's some really good, good advice there, Jess. Mm. Um, so I just want to touch on two more things before we go to our driver of the week. The first is don't be afraid to fail. Every time you start something and it doesn't work out, you have learned an important lesson. So do not feel disheartened. As I've said during this episode, I've tried so many things that have not worked. But so just looking at this drop stripping thing that I tried to do a few weeks ago, I in that time have learned how to set up Shopify, how to kind of look at products and assess whether they're right for the market. I've learned how to do Facebook ads, uh, which I'd previously struggled with, but I actually put a lot of time and effort into kind of learning. Um, I've learned a bit about influencer marketing as well, what works and what doesn't. So every time you work out what like isn't working for your business or any business, you know how to make yourself more kind of better and efficient in the future. So a failure is not a bad thing. And I always say this in, in any walk of life, if you fail at something, that's not bad. That's good. You've learned something and you're now a better person. Yeah. And that's, that's really important. important. Yeah, that's a massive mindset thing right there, Jess. Yeah. Um, too many people are worried of failure or it not working, etc. cetera. Um, but the journey to that point is what you actually pick up along the way and what skill you learn and, and how you educate yourself. And um, yeah, the fact, like you said, you just gave a prime example. You've looked at this dropshipping idea. It hasn't worked, but what you've gained off the back of that is now going to help elevate you in, in other ways of, of your life form. So um, yeah, don't be afraid to fail. Give it a go and mm. see, where, see where it takes you. Absolutely. Um, and the other thing, the last thing is, uh, if there is a conflict of interest between your side hustle and your job, you need to be really careful. So if, if you're in a job where you have a contract, look at your contract really, really carefully to see if you are allowed to do these things. For example, if you're a mechanic for, you know, a, a big dealership and you're doing mechanic services on the side, is that allowed? Because if it's not allowed and you get fired, that could really screw things up. And, um, I kind of did this. Um, I when I was oh, no. working for a for a PR agency, I set up Jet Social, kind of in the background, with the view that if I got any PR work, I would um, refer that to the agency I was working for. But I didn't tell the agency, and they found the website and they got upset with me. Um, and I didn't get fired, but I did leave very shortly after that, all on good terms. And I did refer them PR work, but you just have to just think about this stuff. There is a connection between what you do at home in your spare time as a business and your job. So if you need to have conversations with bosses or read your contract, or maybe even go to a lawyer um, just to read over your contract to say, if there's a conflict of interest, you should, you should do that because you need to be careful. But um, it might be that 
actually your side hustle is completely separate to your job it's nothing to not not even in the same industry again still be careful and with every business there will be some kind of clause that says you're not allowed to like solicit work from clients that you work with in your job so definitely don't do that that is a big no-no and could get you fired even if you don't have a contract um so just bear this stuff in mind yeah and don't be using your kind of employees time um to do your side hustle make sure it's in your own time as well because that's yeah. uh, it's quite easy to sort of work on your side hustle while you're at work maybe not doing so much during the day and you've decided okay i'm just gonna do a bit of my side hustle like yeah just be careful in that respect and um, do it in your spare time do something that doesn't conflict um your your employees interests um, or potentially even your sponsor interests um and explore your ideas and what you're good at and enjoy it really that's the the key bit um another fun fact about me i've also done this i've also done (laughs) side hustles (laughs) in a job when i was very very young i was like 19 maybe um the one of the employees called me she's like what's this i'm like uh just something else I'm working on. She told the boss. Um, oh, no. Again, I left quite, quite quickly. I hated that job, which is why I was not doing it. And actually, I did a good job for them, but I, I just had other interests. I wanted to do music industry stuff. So yeah, I, I basically then left. And then when they gave a reference to my new job, they said <laughs> the reference was satisfactory. I was like, okay, <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so yeah that, that's a really good point to make and again you know they, they are failures of mine like I screwed up in jobs and I think that I mean it's a good kind of um indicator that maybe employment is not for me and I should be doing my own thing because I'll just do it anyway so yeah think think about how how you operate and how you like to work because if you find yourself thinking about other stuff during your full-time job maybe it's time to just take the risk and you know take the leap into the thing that you really want to do yeah um which you know is scary and probably not always the best advice but i did it and it worked out yeah i mean that's the thing you've took you you took a risk and it's paid off other people Mm. do take that risk and it doesn't pay off but um like me i'm in employment um and i'm doing my racing if you like as a side hustle um but i've got an agreement to do that which allows me to to do both together um but I've made sure that I've covered the basis that I'm doing it properly to start with. So um, unlike Jess in your early day, Jess, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'm not at work working on my sponsorship. It's all done in my own time. Mm. Um, and I get plenty of days off to go and do what I need to do in, in my mm. sport and, and the race sponsorship. So that's, you know, that's fine. Um, but don't be doing it at work because it's not, <laughs> it's not a sensible idea. Yeah. Um, particularly Pick, your if you're boss will get upset. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Um, but I think today's been quite interesting, Jess. It's a little bit different mm. away from kind of racing sponsorship. Yeah. Um, but for sure, I think it's good for drivers to look at other ways to generate income um, that may not directly go into the, the motorsport pot, but it may allow them to have more income that allows them to potentially their job and, and then get more time to do motorsport. Um, mm. But there's, there's so much you can do. I mean, there's the, the world out there right now is a bit strange because of the pandemic and, and where we're at, but that doesn't mean to say that there's opportunity out there for you and, and you've got your whole life ahead of you. And I always live in like, don't regret anything. Um, mm. I don't live in the what ifs. I literally, if I've got something I'm interested in and I, I think I've got the skills for it, I usually just throw myself at it and, and just enjoy the ride and see where it takes me. Um, and I think that's that's kind of me. I just like opportunity and, and making the most of my life. So, yeah, I don't know if that's any good advice for this this podcast today, Jess, but it's super interesting to see what, what you've done. Um, there's some things I didn't know about you there today that I've done, <laughs> Jess. It's been quite interesting. But, you know, this whole kind of journey of life has been, you know, it's about learning and finding what you're good at and what you enjoy. And if you can then monetize it, um, even better. Yeah, absolutely. And I I would love to hear from you guys who are listening um, about your current side hustles, things that you've been thinking of doing, whether you've been like thinking on this for a while and you want a bit of kind of direction, go post in the Racing Mental Sponsorship community on Facebook, because I love talking about this kind of stuff. So I'll definitely kind of give you some, some pointers and some guidance on what to do, what not to do, how to develop your idea, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, go, go pop into the group, um, join if you're not uh, joined up already, but yeah, just um, post in there and, and we'll have a chat about side hustles.
Sounds good. Sounds good. Shall we get on to our driver of the week, Jess? Yes. yes. Um, we got an awesome young lass um, from across the pond today. Uh, Jess, if you want to introduce her, because you've introduced her to me, and I think uh, she's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so um, Addison Roger, um, I've been following her on Instagram for a little while now, and she is so cool. Like, I aspire to be this cool, and she's only seven. So she's um, a seven-year-old dirt racer um, over in the U.S., um she is an ambassador for um shift up now um she has done like so much cool stuff but what i really love about her is the way that she uses video on on instagram so she does like tiktoks and stuff but she's just got such at- attitude i always said attitude there and her her instagram is bad addison racing and you kind of really get this like this this vibe from her she's just so cool so um, her account is run by her mum. So well done, mum. So yeah, big shout out to Addison. Um, super cool kid, doing amazing things um, across the pond. Um, so I'm really happy to have you as uh, driver of the week. Yeah, and I think um, I've just I've been browsing her, her profile for a, for a little while. Followed her for a couple of weeks or so, and uh, Jess, she's actually on brand. Um, she's got uh, the the racer mentor pink hair. <laughs> <laughs> she's got oh, which is which is also right um but no i think um i think like you know for her, for someone her age to have that much kind of sass and you know she's got a really cool profile of what she gets up to and it looks awesome i think i think the whole kind of dirt car racing versus the tarmac stuff we do over here um is actually quite different to, to watch and mm. um she's she must be the coolest kid in school at you know at her school like, yeah <laughs> the car is awesome um it's like, I mean, I've, I've, I've watched lots of oval stuff before and, uh, you know, my uncle sort of grew up racing ovals and um, I've, I've never really watched the oval karting scene out in America in terms of the, the dirt karting. And uh, I think I watched something on Netflix not that long ago and she reminds me of, of that episode that I watched and um, it just looks so cool. But yeah, fair play to her. So it's great to welcome her to the club and congratulations Addison um still be carry on being awesome <laughs> and uh we look forward to following your profile and do check her out yeah absolutely so just um she is bad Addison racing uh on Instagram um if you go to the show notes for this episode you'll find uh links to where where you can find what she's doing as well awesome so thank you everyone for tuning in to this slightly longer episode um, of the Racing Mental Sponsorship Podcast. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about YouTube. So um, please subscribe, maybe leave a, a review if you've liked this. But uh, until then, we'll see you next week. Yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next week, guys. <laughs>